In this short video, I'm going to provide an example of what's called counterfactual reasoning to answer the following question. If we know a man of 82 has died after contracting COVID, what would his life expectancy have been if he'd not contracted COVID? The average age of male death in the UK is around 82. But if a man reaches 82, then on average, i.e. without knowing any details of the particular man, he can expect to live on for about another eight years. And that's because he survived all the childhood illnesses, accidents and other illnesses that collectively bring the average age of death down to 82. Now we know that COVID is a disease which elderly males are most at risk. Indeed, the average age of a man dying from COVID is also 82. So it seems reasonable to assume that a typical 82-year-old man dying from COVID loses on average eight years of life. But that reasoning is flawed. In fact, the question we're trying to answer is, knowing that a specific man, let's call him Fred, has died at the age of 82 after getting COVID, how much longer would Fred have lived if he'd not got COVID? And this is a classic counterfactual question. We want to know what would happen to Fred in an alternative counterfactual world if something that happened in the real world, namely him getting COVID, was changed. Everything else has to remain unchanged. But we have to take account of everything we can learn about Fred that will be unchanged in the counterfactual world from what happened in the real world. Crucially, by virtue of knowing that Fred died after getting COVID, we learn from the real world that compared to the average 82-year-old, Fred is more likely to also have had some critical pre-existing illness. And this probabilistic knowledge must be retained in the counterfactual world. As very well explained by Judea Pearl, answering a counterfactual question like this requires a causal model and an inference method that are beyond what can be achieved with traditional statistical methods. And in what follows, I'll use illustrative and simplified assumptions to explain this counterfactual reasoning. First, we need a causal model of the real world. And here is such a basic, simplistic causal model. This tells us that a man's life expectancy depends not just on whether the person becomes infected with COVID, but also on many other factors, including whether the person has a pre-existing critical illness. Now, when we assign prior probabilities to these nodes, and conditional probabilities to this node, then the causal model becomes a Bayesian network for which we perform Bayesian inference. So here we're assuming a prior probability of 1% for COVID infection, 10% pre-existing critical illness, and for this, the conditional probability table looks like that, where of course you get higher probabilities in the lower life expectancy when pre-existing critical illness is true and generally higher probabilities of lower life expectancy with the COVID infection. Now changing any of these probability assumptions within reason doesn't change the thrust of the argument and you're free to try out the model and make your own changes using the links in the video description below. Anyway with these assumptions we get the following prior marginal probabilities as shown here. So in the real world, when we look at this, the median life expectancy of an average 82-year-old is eight years. But if we know that a person contracts COVID, then that goes down. And if we know that they die, so the life expectancy becomes zero, then through Bayesian inference, we get the revised probability for pre-existing critical illness. Now we've got to use this new information about the probability that Fred has pre-existing critical illness in a counterfactual world where he's not infected with COVID. Now we can't do that in this model because as soon as we reset COVID infection to false and we move the observation that the person died shortly afterwards, then we've lost the information about the probability that he has a pre-existing illness. So the counterfactual model required is this one. So COVID infection and life expectancy in the counterfactual world are simply copies of the same name nodes from the real world. They've got exactly the same prior and conditional probability tables. There's the prior for COVID infection and the probability table for life expectancy is exactly the same as the one over here. So let's just, again, put back in the observations from the real world. Now, we've got the learnt probability of pre-existing critical illness that we can use in the counterfactual world. 
So in the counterfactual world, when we make the counterfactual assumption that Fred didn't get COVID, we get this revised life expectancy where the median number of years is two rather than eight years. And as I said, the inference performed in this counterfactual model is not possible using the original model alone because we can't have COVID infection being both true and false at the same time in that model. 